Hello everyone. Uh, let us now talk about the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization of signals. Uh, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure for signal actually should lead us to basically treating signals as uh, points in the signal space. So uh, we want to treat the signals as vectors and uh, in the vector space these uh, signals uh, can be represented as uh, coordinates in the vector space. So that's the that's the point. That's the actual um, uh, procedure whereby we will apply the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization so that we can uh, we can uh, treat the signals as uh, signal points. No, I will do it with an example. Let us consider a signal S1 T. Uh, its value is one from zero to capital T by three. Um, where t is the time period and uh, along x-axis is the time. Uh, second signal is 1 from 0 to 2 capital T by 3. The third signal is t by 3 to t and the fourth signal is 1 throughout uh, uh, from 0 to capital T. Now, uh, these uh, first of all we will have to identify whether these signals are linearly independent or linearly dependent. So if you look at S4, this signal, so S4 signal can be constructed from S1T and S2T. So that means this is, uh, uh, this is linearly dependent uh, signals. If at least one of the signal or vector can be expressed as linear combination of others, this is linear dependence. If no vector or signal can be um, uh, expressed in it can be written in this way then the vector or signals are linearly independent so that's the definition of linearly dependent signals or vectors or uh, linearly independent signal now the question is that can i construct an orthonormal set for these signals let us apply gram schmidt orthonormalization procedure in which we will define the first signal f1t and it will be given as S1T divided by the norm of S1T. So it will be, uh, this is S1T and uh, the norm is expressed as the under root of uh, signal uh, integral going from 0 to capital T, uh, S1 square T dt. And if you solve this, you will find that F1T will come out to be under root 3T and the uh, limits will be from 0 to capital T by 3 and 0 otherwise. So uh, now let us try to find the f uh, the second orthogonal component which is f2t and it is found out s2t minus the projection of uh, um, uh, s2t on s1 so we will have to uh, subtract this projection right from s2t right so uh, whatever is the uh, is the projection of s2t along the uh, S1 T signal so that will be defined by uh, this S21 so in general S i j is generally uh, defined as 0 to capital T S i t F j t t t right so in this case for S21 it will be S2 T and F1 T d t so from here we can find out S2 T and uh, we will have to do take the norm which is given by S2T minus S21 F1T norm. So this will be, if you solve this, this will come out to be under root 3T. Uh, uh, the limits will be from T by 3 to 2T by 3. And similarly, we can find out for F3T, we'll have to subtract the projections of uh, uh, S3T from uh, on S2T and S1. So in that case, we will get F3T and it will be under root 3 by capital T, 2T by 3 to capital T. So this is F3. So we have, if we draw all the three signals, all the three orthogonal signals that we have obtained, so this will be F1T, uh, its uh, value will be under root 3 by T to, uh, it, it will be under root 3 by T from 0 to capital T by 3. F2T, the value will be under root 3 by T and uh, uh, the uh, time will vary from uh, twice t by 3 to t, capital T. And for F3t, the value is under root 3 by t from 2 t by 3 to capital T, right? And now S1 can be, um, we can 
we can express s1 right we can uh, now uh, s1 can be expressed in terms of uh, f1 t f2 t and f3 t if we uh, put a coordinate system along this axis is f1 t and f2 t on this side and third axis is let's say f3 t then in terms of f1 t f2 t and f3 t this signal s1 can be represented by these coordinates under root t under root of t by 3 comma 0 comma 0 under root t by 3 on f1 t 0 on f2 t and 0 on f3 t right and similarly s2 t can be expressed with uh, these coordinates s3 t can be expressed with the, these coordinates and s4 can be expressed with uh, these three coordinates on uh, a coordinate on a uh, coordinates on a, on a uh, on, on a coordinate system where f1 t f2 t and f3 t are the axes and these signals are expressed in terms of f1 t component f2 t component and f3 t component. so that's the uh, that's the advantage of gram schmidt orthogonalization that the signals have been now uh, uh, put equal to uh, points in the uh, in the coordinate system so signal uh, signals are treated now we can treat the signals as the signal points thank you